go. Okay, students, uh, one of the things that we want to practice today is proper hair color application. Uh, we're doing the brush method. So what you're going to need, let's talk about this a little bit first. So we want to make sure that our mannequin is separated into four quadrants. In other words, four sections, and we already know center frontal to center nape, tip of the ear to tip of the ear, and then you section each one off. This is part of keeping your color organized. Once you get used to this, you already visualize it. So, you know, once you're experienced and do a lot more, many times we don't section. It depends on the color, depends on what we're doing. You may have to, you may not have to, it just depends. The thing that's fascinating is there is a procedure for tint going darker. A tint is a hair color from a dark blonde to black. That's considered tint. And, uh, and you also have the lighter tints, which are dark blonde, because you're still blonde, to very, very light blonde, or, or even the pastels, which are the platinums. So the dark blonde area, or the light brown, the light brown again is brown. So it, it, all of those are called tones of color. And what you're doing with hair color, for instance, this is a light brown haired mannequin. Whether you can see it like that or not, it just depends on how the camera takes it. But this would be considered a light brown between a level five and a level six. In other words, either five or six levels lighter or areas lighter than black, okay? So those are factors. When you go into the beauty supply and you see those numbers, that's what that means. So you go to the black and you figure, okay, that's come up this many levels. Certain things have been removed. I am planning on doing a just a theory, just a verbal class on hair color. I'm trying to set up the lesson plan because I want knowledge gained on that. I don't want it to be blah, 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 blah. And I do have formulas, specific formulas that I work with. And after a while, you don't need the formulas because it's already on top of your head. You already know what created that color. So today we're gonna to be talking about proper hair color application. So you have certain different ones. You have tint going darker. You have tint going lighter. The tint going lighter is not different than, um, for instance, the virgin lightener. Uh, and, and all of those are just certain names, but it's procedures and applications. It depends where you are and where you need to go on the type of application. You Today we're gonna to be doing the first thing we're going to do is a uh, the application now for a virgin lightener and there's certain things that you that you do that's the first one we're going to do then on another section we're going to do a retouch but there's a procedure there's certain movements certain characteristics about how we apply and then a tint going darker the thing that's fascinating on all of this is a virgin relaxer is applied exactly the same as a virgin lightener Applications identical. We have to do certain things to the hair on a relaxer because it's extremely relaxed. Relaxed hair is very curly hair. And if you, you know, certain types of hair are much tighter in the curl than other types of hair, but still the application is the same. There's certain things we have to do. We have to separate it. We have to organize it. And then we put the chemical. It is a chemical that we put on it that says, okay, hair, I'm going to beat you up and I'm going to make you straight. All right. So, with this, we're just changing the color. But chemical application or, you know, those applications are pretty much the same. It's you need to know hair structure. You need to know certain little details. And I know I'm kind of fishing off this area, but I'm giving you other information for future classes that we're gonna do as well. And you'll be able to relate back to this. Um, okay, a virgin, a relaxer retouch, the same as a tint retouch. You only work, retouch means the hair that has now grown out. And it never ceases to fascinate me when I see people with really gray hair and then uh, they say that my color doesn't last long. And I want to tell them the color doesn't penetrate down to your scalp. That right away they start seeing that white line or that gray line growing out. Hair is a natural process. It grows out. 
the product doesn't go under the skin and into the papilla and into the hair bulb and into the hair cell and says, okay, now you've got to be this color. It stays on the outside, all right? So as hair grows, you're going to see it. So if you're having this problem, you need to go lighter. It's more forgiving. That's why I'm this color. It's more forgiving. So there's so many factors about hair color. Like I said, I am going to do a lecture class. It is going to be lengthy, So, but what my recommendation on that is take notes. All right, just take notes on the verbal that I'm going to give you. So um, what we're applying is we're just going to use a tube color. This is a real, this is a lighter color. It's not, now mannequins have been pre-colored, all right? When hair is pre-colored, it's not going to lift or come off or become lighter like natural hair. It has, the way that I describe it is when you have pre-colored hair, and I hope this isn't offensive, but it's like false teeth, it's not real. It looks real, but it's not real. And it's treated completely differently. So when we have pre-colored hair, the pigment inside has now been changed. It is now artificial color inside. And it becomes, the more you put on top, I call it from cement, I mean from sand to cement. It's harder to break through. So it just depends on what you're doing. I always recommend that for people that color their own hair, don't bring it out to the ends. If it's not fading, then there's a reason for that. There's a whole reason for that. So if it's not fading, don't bring it out to the end. See, I've gotten into the topic of, I'm trying to teach you application, and I'm getting into the topic of hair color. So let's just go into the application. I am going to tunnel vision this now into the application, but do watch the video. It's going to be verbal, like I said. It's just going to be talking. I'm going to try and have some stuff to show you uh, to be able to talk about it a lot more. But there are a lot of formulas, and it is just yellow, red, and blue. All right, so, okay visual. I've got this tube of color. We are using a tube color on this. If you pick up a tube of color, the tubes of color have little lines on the side that tell you how many ounces and the ounce separations on them. You never squeeze a tube of color like this. That's crazy because then you're working too hard and you're literally almost losing a whole ounce in it by doing that because then you've got to totally smooth this down and bring it down. So the way that tubes of color work, and I'm gonna open one up here for you. I'm gonna open up another one. <clears throat> I'm hoping that my phone doesn't ring because I just realized that I still have it attached to me. Okay, so here's a new one. <clears throat> when you wanna know the level, it's at the bottom. It's a number on the bottom. So this is 4.03N. The N signifies neutral, all right? And um, like I said, we're tunnel vision on application. So um, the way that you open up your tube is you open it up and you can see that it's got a closed edge to it. Yet the lid on the very end of it has a tip, just a little sharp tip. You're gonna put this here, you're gonna press it in, and then you can then use your color. I'm not gonna do that with this one, but I've done it on the other one already because I was showing you uh, the students yesterday on how to do that. It's really nice if you can pick up one of these. Uh, they're at Sally's or, you know, uh, suppliers have them, but this helps turn the tube and you always squeeze it from the top and bring it down. You can support that squeezing, you know, once if you, if you hold it tight and turn at the same time, you're not gonna squeeze it up, you're still gonna squeeze it out. That's the whole thing behind it. A retouch, I'm gonna do a virgin color first. And remember the virgin applicator for a lightener and the virgin applicator for a relaxer are exactly the same. The difference is for a um, relaxer and a lightener, the subsections going across, this is a section, subsections are what you slice through. And by the way, you need to wear gloves when you're working with color really should. Anyways, uh, so for a relaxer and a lightener, your subsections are one eighth inch. Oh my God, how do I know what one eighth inch is? I don't know what one eighth inch. Do I need to get a ruler? Do I need to take? Nope. It's right here. One eighth. That's your tip. 
Okay? One fourth is just a little bit further up on the tip. So measure this to your ruler if you want to. And this tells you a half inch is right here. Fourth inch is there. Eighth inch is here. So there's your clue. You don't need to, you know, be guessing. You've got a pretty good idea what your subsections. After you do it for a while, yes, you, you already see it. And by the way, if any of you are doing clipper cutting, these are the best for cleaning your clippers. Absolute best for making sure that all those little hairs, my ring is a little bit stuck and my gloves are tight. Uh, it's poking me. Anyways, um, so know that that's your points of measure on this, on the brush that you can just use. And you can tell that I've used it, and I use it many times to section off, because this is a little bit stained, and it will get stained. It's been sanitized, but, uh, you know, that's just stained. It's, it, uh, it's white, white grabs, but it lets go. That's why it's lighter and letting go. Things you're going to learn when we talk about the theory of color. All right, so then you're going to need a color bowl. Your color bowls on the inside have numbers, all right? You, you, uh, you may not be able to see it, but it's got um, two ounces. Let me see. Let me fix my glasses here. Yeah, two ounces, four ounces, and six ounces. And that goes back to after a while you know. All you really need on a retouch all over is two ounces of color and your developer, which I've already got here. This is 20 volume. I set them up in little uh, squares so that we can, I don't have the full bottle over here. So I know I've got 20 volume in there and this is what I'm going to use. And I've got two ounces in there as well. So that would then make it four ounces in the bowl. You always want to put your color in first because the color comes out like spaghetti strings, fat ones, noodles, I guess. So when that happens, and I'm only using one color. Remember, you're learning application. I'm going with a virgin lightener. This is not necessarily a lightener. All right, this is a very, very light color, but is not, a, in other words, a bleach or a lightener. That's what we call in the salon, a lightener is bleach. So I'm gonna take this off and I'm going to measure it out to two, uh, I want two little squares. See, these lines are ounces. So by these little lines, look at your tube. These are ounces. So I'm going to squeeze it out to the second one. And before I put my, okay, let me make sure I'm correct here. There you go. And you'll see that that is about and always put the lid back on. Hydrogen peroxide, which is what we use to mix this together for the chemical reaction, hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. What is H2O? Water. What is O? Oxygen. Two hydrogen, two oxygen. You put, you add oxygen to this, it starts what's called oxidation. In other words, it starts changing. It'll get dark. So make sure your lid is tight. Always put your lid on it. If you want to take this out, you just turn it back the other way. You can use it for another tube. Right now, I'm just going to kind of leave it in there to keep it in a safe place, but these are fantastic to work. Another thing you could think about using, surprisingly, if you don't have one, put your duck bill, and it's, you got to hold it really, really tight to get it to, to turn. Pull it all the way in, and it will turn for you but it's a lot of work so it's best to get the the little tubes uh, the applicators to work with or just squeeze from this side and keep turning it or folding it all right so that's how you take that out you're going to use the maximum you're not throwing money away in other words when you do this all right so then I'm going to get my tint brush I want to take this see if I put the developer in there I'd have a bunch of little bumps so I want to turn it around, I want to smooth it first. So I'm smoothing this. And by the way, if you want to know, if you don't know what certain colors are or what their tone is, you know, it's sometimes they're given names instead of tones. And you don't know what those names mean. Cedar block, what does that mean? Does that mean red brown or red white or what? Cedar block, that's two different tones. Um, so, um, 
you put it a, a little bit of this color just on a white piece of paper give it a few hours and you'll see the tone of that color show up within that so uh, anyways that's a little clue for you so I'm going to take uh, two ounces of this 20 volume that I've got okay this is the one I opened and I'm going to pour it in there all right and I'm looking at it and yeah it's right at the four ounce mark I mean just slightly halfway now it will mix nicely I don't have those little strings in there trying to mix up so the thing about a virgin application you want to start away from the scalp the reason you start away from the scalp is because everybody's scalp and remember mannequins don't have heat but everybody has a natural heat to their scalp when you decide to do this you're going to take the section the section off now I know how far I need to go so I'm going to insert my brush wipe I want a dirty end I want a clean end this keeps it if I were to just do this the likelihood of it dripping on stuff becomes extreme clean it always wipe your brush this is the side with the product this is all going to control also going to control your product so I wipe the other side because what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take this section out now I'm going to apply from about an inch away to about an inch and a half away to two inches from the ends. The reason for that is because of the natural heat. Heat makes color come up faster, happen faster. So when we mix a chemical in there and you've got that natural heat, it's going to work faster. Now the ends, because they're the weakest, all right, that's why you don't apply to the ends all the time. So once this lifts where you can see that the color has lifted, then you would bring it and apply it to the scalp and the ends. So your practice and your procedure becomes important because what if you're really slow and you're over here and you've got to run back here and then you've got to bring that to the scalp and then you've got to run back over here and you haven't started that yet. So proficiency and efficiency is extreme. You've got to move fast when you apply. You've got to know what you're doing. You've got to know where you're at. Another factor is color has no brains. People are surprised about that. There are no brains in color. When I put the color on the mid shaft or the belly of this, and it's, we call it the mid shaft, the middle part of that hair strand, I'm going to lean it over to the other side. Some people start from the bottom, but then you're, you know, it becomes a problem because the other hair keeps coming down and then you're having to pin the hair up and so it's much easier for me to take a piece of foil bring it over attach the foil now I'm protecting the other hair see so when I apply this product on the mid shaft and I'm only taking a fourth inch just a little bit. Let me bring the color over here so I'm not having to reach. And I'm just using color. Remember, I'm not using lightener, but we're doing the lightener procedure. So we just want an eighth of an inch. So what is that? Very, very skinny. All right. So just along the mid shaft, and then I'm going to lay it on my hand and make sure that it's only on the middle of the hair. See that? It's not on the scalp and it's not on the ends. Then I lay it over. See, when this hair lays over, if I didn't have that foil on there, again, the product has no brains. It would start working on that hair that it's laying on as well. We don't want it to do that. So another eighth of an inch. And again, I wipe the back clean, dirty. You use your dirty side and then you lay it on your hand. That's why you have to wear gloves, especially if you're using lightener. Your hands are going to burn like crazy. And there I lay that over. Now you want to leave a little bit of a gap. You want to leave an air gap right there. You want to kind of loop it over. And it gets a little harder to loop over as you do this. So this is the virgin lightener application. You want to stay a couple inches away from the scalp. Make sure you get the front and the back. 
and then as you go down it's going to get just a little bit more difficult because we're getting wider all right so I'm going to bring this up remember you're learning procedure so I would do this with all of it okay then I place my there see how it loops it so I have my the end of my um, <clears throat> tint brush doing that for me so this is getting wider so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to separate it into two areas because this is a wide area so I'm going to now get half of it and come up and do you see you just have to work fast and it's just boom 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 one step next step move forward oh no I got some color on there that's there it is okay um, it doesn't matter because it's just a mannequin but still you have to be careful about that maybe I didn't want that color on there again take that and loop it what it's doing now is the hair is sticking to each other in that area uh, where I would have to be careful would be on this hair I don't want it to land on it so maybe I would move the foil over a little bit so again I'm just going to take a little bit section here just to show you as we do it take it oops to the back make sure you get both sides because uh, sometimes when people do lighteners they go back to check it and they see some yellow and they see some orange what happened where it's orange they didn't cover it enough so some t that's why you do the front and the back and that's why your sections need to be so thin because once I put it up here and I put it back here what about that hair in the middle that's the why it needs to be 1 8 inch subsections for lightener so see I'm pressing it down I'm pressing it down you see that brush press it down I bring it up I'm pressing it down then I'm gonna put my okay so let's say now we're gonna we're done we've taken it all the way down I'm teaching you procedure and and now you know on the wider area okay I would just maybe do this middle area and then do the sides um, as you go down and then it becomes narrow again and you can see that it's kind of sticking to itself right there it's helping it hold itself up so once I'm all the way down on the lightener procedure and remember this is the exact same procedure that you would do on a relaxer retouch mid shaft okay so I've taken it all up all everything is up everything is done so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to carve this out the section that I did and then I'm going to then take see we're going to pretend that this has got got it all over we've started at the perimeter line at the nape and we're starting to bring it down you want to keep those separations okay you want to keep that hair separated so you want to bump it out just a bit okay and then just bump it out just a bit you see how that's elevated away from the scalp we're not pushing it into the scalp or slapping it in there we're bumping it out a bit there you go and I would have started from the nape and you can almost see those little sections that I took you can almost see those carvings out that's what you want you want that hair to breathe and you want the rest of the hair to uh, continue being processed okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the procedure this is a mannequin so she's not gonna complain I'll finish her up later and in a little bit I'll show you how to take it back to the scalp and bring it all the way out on that one so now we're gonna do a retouch okay so the retouch is only on the hair that's grown out she's gotten it lighter she's gotten it darker whatever uh, if it's darker you just bring it all the way out to the ends by the way and I'll show you that in a minute how to do a just a, a tint going darker so anyways um, you're gonna take this again same thing but this is now a retouch where it's grown out all right so this becomes right there that's where the hair has grown out now look at where I'm folding it now you see 
All right, so I'm going to then, same thing, only at the scalp, both sides. This time, put your loop up a little higher. And this is how you do a retouch. It's only at the scalp. We call it the line of demarcation. Let's pretend this is black and this is gray. We only take it to that line where the black is at. You're not going to take it above that. You don't have to. You're not going to take it below it. You want to take it right up to it so that it kind of attaches to it. So you can see that this is a retouch application. Again, you can see the separations. And we do it all the way down to the gin, the nape, perimeter line. And I want to show you as well how to keep it from, um, and just remember to wipe your brush. See, I've got my clean side. It's my dirty side that I'm working on. So you can see how much faster you can get with this as long as you um, mind your application. And if once you know where you're at, again, we would have taken it all the way down. Now, when you start coming down, it does want to flip down a bit. Sometimes, again, what people do with a retouch, they start from the bottom, but this is the problem with that for me. Start from the bottom, and then they're going to clip the hair up, all right? Then they're going to do the retouch down here. All right, so we're doing the retouch application, and I'm, I mean, you know, I'm not going to clip it all the way down to the perimeter line. That's just like way too short, but I would pick this up and just work it along the retouch. And you can see that that's separating all by itself with the color by itself. <clears throat> all right, now I've got to move up, right? So then I would undo that, hold that down, clip it back up, and then apply. Again, you'd have to be fast at it, and only at the new growth is what we call it, that new hair coming out, and you notice I just made it easier. I used my clip to do that. Two minutes. All right, so what I'm going to do, and so you see that this is a little bit, you know, because of having to open and close this thing. So when you bring this down, you want to, again, loop it out so that it separates it. So you have both methods. You can start from the top, and go down, or you can start from the bottom and go up. Okay, students, I still need to show you the tint um, going darker. So we've got our 30 minutes up, so we need to put another up. We'll be right back is what I'm saying, all right? So I'll just see you in just a little minute. Okay, students, now um, you can see that I went ahead and finished the retouch and you see that the ends because we're only working on the hair that has grown out so you've seen phase one this is phase two on it just to finish it off so you saw the virgin lightener which it's just at the mid shaft and then after it grows out and she comes back and wants the same color again then you're only going to work on the hair at the scalp but this hair would have already been done. Now remember, we're learning procedures. You're not seeing exact results when we do a retouch, when we do a lightener. Right now what you're learning is procedures on how to. So this is a virgin lightener and it would be the same thing as a virgin relaxer. Same process, same movements, other than you know you separate the hair. There's a few little quirks that when we get into chemical hair relaxing, you'll understand a little bit more. But basically, it's the same way. It's mid-shaft. Once that's, that uh, softens with the relaxer or comes lighter with the lightener, then you bring it to the scalp and the ends. And again, the determining factor on that is the condition of the ends. Do you uh, leave the ends till the very last? Do you do it the same time? And those are all decisions that we make as hairstylists. Once you know where you're at with, um, with the hair that you're working on, and then the retouch. Okay, she came back. She wants it all the same color again. This has grown out, so it's just at the scalp. You don't bring it out to the ends if she's fading. Let's say that you've gone darker. All right? And uh, she's got gray hair. 
and you're just covering up that gray hair. And this still looks just fine. Don't bring it out to the ends. But if she's fading, where she's got a little bit of gold tones or whatever, and she's telling you that, you know, it's gotten lighter on the ends, then you put it at the scalp, and the last 10 minutes is when you bring it out. Because what happens is the developer drops its strength. It's like taking an Alka-Seltzer and put her a fizz and putting it in water. After a while, if you let it sit for a while, the fizz goes down. It's the same thing with this. The, the developer mixed in conjunction with the color, it loses strength once it's been left out in the oxygen for a while. It's going to be real strong at first and then just weaken. So once it weakens, the cuticle in this has already opened up. It's already been exposed. So uh, then you would bring it out to the ends and leave it for the last 10 minutes and she should have equal color. Now the next color service that we're doing is going darker. What is the process? What is the procedure for going darker? Now we're using the same color all over just for convenience, but let's say that the procedure has come up and she wants to go darker. This is the easiest one. You're going to absolutely love this. The best way to do this is to start at the bottom. And uh, it's really easier. The only thing you have to be careful of with the color is that you don't get it on her skin. All right, so you would put something here, put a paper towel there, clip it or whatever. But all it is, is you start at the scalp, bring it all the way to the ends. That's it. And you want to work it in to make sure that you've got it in there, so you just kind of pinch it a bit. And we're going to take the next section. And same thing, clean and dirty. And you want to take it from the scalp. Put it, lay it on your hand. Remember, you're going to lay it on the opposite hand of what you've got your brush in. You're not going to lay it on the hand you have the brush. How are you going to brush the color on? So you want to lay it on the opposite hand. And you want to make sure that it's covered all the way. And again, you don't want to push it in. You just want it to lay very naturally there. And we're taking about, we're doing like about fourth inch subsections as we go across. Where you have to be careful with this is the perimeter line because she will stain. And if she stains, then sometimes sometimes you can take it off depending on the color you're using. Sometimes you can't. You can use hand sanitizer, however, and with this pandemic, everybody's using hand sanitizer, but surprisingly enough to take it off. You can also do it with color. You take the color, color relifts color, and you can kind of play it around. All hair, permanent hair color has a shampoo molecule in it. So you can just kind of go around if she's stained around the skin before you take the color off. But this one just goes all the way to the ends. You're good with that. I got one little spot right there that I just saw. Anyways, um, Another thing, you can just get shampoo. Take some shampoo and clean it up and then wipe it off. Do not add water. When you add water, it sets the color in. So that's why when you rinse it, like I said, color has a shampoo molecule in it. What you're going to see when you rinse it is you're going to see um, a lot of bubbles. Just like you're thinking, goodness, I didn't use any shampoo on that. Well, remember... Color has a shampoo molecule in it. Now see why I had to make sure and get the back side. You saw that kind of uh, dark spot there that showed that it didn't get, didn't get it in there. So you've got to kind of smush it around a bit, make sure it falls in. Get another one here. Bring it all the way up. Do that whole quadrant. And this one, going darker, is from scalp to ends. In the finish, when I finish this whole thing, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to color it all the same color. And I'll just put the color all over. I'll go ahead and take it to the scalp over there on the other side. I'll pull it to the ends, on the back, on the retouch, just to get a same uniform color. And what you're learning right now basically is just procedures. Different procedures that you can do when we're doing a color. 
So you see that I'm just taking it, making sure that it's on all over, smoothing it on, wiping the back of my brush, and I just drip some on the floor. That's why I say do not be anywhere in your home because most of you are doing this at home right now because of the pandemic. So um, be very careful about it because it will drip still yet, especially if you get your color a little bit runny and you don't want to do that because then it'll just start running down her face and a lot of that has to do with the heat of the scalp. The heat of the scalp is what does that. So you can see that I brought this out. Just to have a couple more slices here and um, we'll be done with this going darker procedure. That's all it is. And again the variables are how dark all of those things. This is just a procedure. This is not uh, This is not what you would do 100% of the time with every situation. You still need to know what you're working with. You still need to see the color that you're applying, the color that you're covering, all of that. All of those are factors. Uh, we're learning, like I said, right now we're just learning the how-tos. Normally when you go darker, you just to go from scalp to ends. Now let's say that they're blonde, a yellow blonde, and they want to go darker. Well, before you put the darker color that they want on, you've got to determine what color blonde are they. What am I working with? If they're a gold blonde, if they're a yellow blonde, okay, gold, you might add a little bit of more uh, a red gold into it to increase that pigment. If they're a yellow blonde, you definitely want to add red pigment back in. The reason for that is because what makes brown? If they're yellow, you need blue and red in there. If they're gold, you need blue in there. So you've got to put, um, you know, you've got to put colors back in. Now, if they're gold, are you going to put a blue color and get it? Uh, probably not. But if they're gold, you know that you've got to use an ash color. But first you replace the red pigment before we go into brown. In other words, you increase that red before that actual brown color is put in. So these are all, like I said, situations. These are all um, areas that we work in. And it doesn't mean that they're all going to be the same. Now, the last procedure that I want to show you is a balage. In other words, um, balage or um, what's the name for the other one? I'll think of it in a minute. It's just on the ends. And there is a procedure for this. Just paint it. And you can kind of bring it up in certain spots, not all the way. It's just the ends. All right, and they may want it all the way to the top. They may just want the bottom and cover it with the top, but all this color is, is just taken and you do it with the side of the brush. The flat brush is not put in there because you want a jagged line. You don't want a solid line right there and you want to kind of come up in a couple spots only just to kind of you know, bleed the hair up a little bit. And it's just, you know, it's called painting, painting it in there. So the balage is where they have it blonde on the ends and lighter at the scalp. And usually they leave about, I mean, uh, I'd say about four, maybe five inches. Some people with really, really long hair may just want it like around their bra strap if they, if they have hair, you know, that's that long. So all of that is preference as far as how high you would take it. So this is the procedure for that. Now that's normally done with lightener, with bleach. And what you're going to do with this is many times, yeah, they do have to go under the dryer because you're going to have these different levels, these different areas of light blonde. And you can see that it's just at the, at the, on the ends. That's it. It's not going up to the scalp totally opposite of a retouch. Um, so a balage, uh, you know, pretty much does uh, just more for decorative and they don't need 
to get retouches so often because it's only on the ends. Now I've seen people do it with color where they have a lighter shade to their own color which makes it look like it faded. Um, and I've also seen it with like if they just want to put red on there. Uh, they just want a red color on there. They don't necessarily want, you know, uh, it blonde. So, and some people have gone darker. Some people have taken it like this and put black into it as opposed to going lighter. Now you see that it's all about the same distance, but we just kind of bring it up to create some melting. It's called melting. Um, so there's another term for it, and it's, uh, my mind is drawing a blank right now, but you guys know what it is. I call it a balage, but um, anyways, and you notice I just apply with the brush on the side. And it doesn't, the, the nice thing about this is it does not have to be perfect. It's just done with the brush on the side. Now the one thing I wanted to tell you too, I told you that um, with the relaxer, and I'm going to use this one to show you. With the relaxer, all we do is the mid shaft. Now what you're going to do with the relaxer, once you've separated all that really tight tangly hair and you've applied it, you're going to wait a little bit. Once you've applied it, you're going to wait a little bit. And we're going to pretend this is a relaxer because the procedure is identical. Just the mid shaft, in other words, the middle of that long hair. And then you're going to take it and with your fingers, you're going to start smoothing it out. Now the product is in there. You're going to do it like about, oh, five minutes after you've applied everywhere that you want it. And you have to be very fast with that because there's different strengths in that. And the stronger ones, they don't stop. They're very, very strong and they work very fast. Could be extremely damaging to the hair if you're not careful. But anyways, you're going to go like this and you're going to see the curl relax. Once you see it relax, then you bring it out to the, to the ends and to the scalp. Then you're going to do it again from the scalp all the way out to the ends. Once you've applied on all, you know, on every bit of the hair, then you're going to do what's called a soft press. You're going to take it. Now remember, this is for a relaxer. Procedure's just the same. We're going to repeat this later. You're going to take the back of the comb and you're going to smooth that out. That's called a soft press. If the hair is really tight and curly and you're thinking, I got to help this out a little bit, take the large teeth of the comb, you insert them and then pull it out and that's called a hard press. Both of those are on your state board questions. Uh, so anyways, the procedures are the same. Same thing with the relaxer retouch. It's only where you need it. The mistake that I see in relaxers is that they do still bring it out to the ends and they really should not. Once you understand the areas of pH, relaxers go all the way up to a pH of 14 and that's a sodium hydroxide relaxer. It does burn the scalp as well. So you don't necessarily want to leave that on the scalp a really long time and you're going to be doing the same. You're going to be pressing, pulling that curl out to make sure that that is straight. With the retouch, you're just going to, you know, that's all we do. But then if she's fading with a color retouch, now those are two different things, okay? So with a color retouch, once she's ready and if she's fading, then we're going to bring it out to the ends. So there's, you know, this is pretty much it, students. And you can see that this has been taken all the way down. And so has the retouch. We did the balage here where it's just the ends and then you do some melting up into it with the side of the brush. What we normally do is we'll cover this when you do a balage. You're going to take it and cover it with a, like a saran wrap or a plastic wrap or you can actually put a, a bag over it and then you put them under the dryer for a while. Where you have to be careful is not to mesh the hair in because then you're going to be coloring or creating you know, some major spots inside. Color does not have brains. You're the one with the brains. You're the one that's supposed to know what you're doing. When we take it from scalp to ends, that's when we're going darker. And we know that if it's a yellow blonde, the first thing we got to do from scalp to ends is put some kind of gold or red in it. And then we put the brown. 
the brown color that we want. And after a while, you get to know your product, you know what your product does. We have to be careful about the hairline when we're applying the color that she doesn't stain and uh, get those darker colors in there. So once you have taken off the filler, if you're going darker now, let's say, like I said, she's blonde, we've put red gold back in there to replace the red, and then um, you're gonna shampoo it out and you have to dry it. You have to dry it at least to a damp dry. Now what we did by putting the red in there, that's called a color filler. It fills that color back in to create a shade of brown. If you put the color in into damp hair, that then becomes a water filler. And sometimes people put, um, maybe they might leave a little bit of a conditioner in there if the hair is extremely damaged. But I'm gonna tell you something. If hair is so damaged, that you have to water fill it with a conditioner in the water, that hair should be just growing out and not be that damaged. What happens is TV commercials lie. They tell people they can do this, this, and all that other stuff, and they really can't. They really cannot. So be aware of that. You know, you, you can advise your client about it. And the more knowledge you have about color and what happens to get the result that you want, uh, where, like I said, I am going to be doing a whole, just a theory class on color. There's going to be a lot of formulas put up there. We're going to come up with certain, you know, how do you create, how do you get this color? I'll have some pictures and so on for you to see how do we take uh, this blonde and make her this brown. All right, so we're going to be writing a lot of formulas. Uh, it, it's just, it will be just a theory, in other words, just a verbal class. So the thing to do on that class is to sit and take notes. Generally, people that have been doing color get a lot of information from that. People that are learning color get information from that. Uh, you, until you start experiencing it, does it, the light come on? Do you realize that, hey, now I understand what she was talking about. And the reality of color is there is no canceling, there's only creating. There is no neutralizing, there's only creating, because the result of canceling is a result, is an effect, is a finished look. The result of neutralizing, again, it's a finished look, a result of what you just mix together to neutralize or cancel a color out. Normally, we're trying to cancel red out of the hair. Well, what are you going to mix with it? You're not going to mix green because there's very few actual green browns that you're going to find, but there's a lot of blue-violet browns you might find. And it just depends on the level and where you're at. So this is what that class is going to be about, and it's, it's going to cover a whole lot of information for you. Uh, the main thing with this class is just take notes and then keep your notes for later. So when you start doing color, it will click for you. It will come back. So students, all I'm going to do now, and you don't have to stick around for this, is I'm going to go ahead and take all of this. I'm going to take all this color out through the hair and just uh, do it all over. So she's, she's going to be all one color. So she's no longer, you know, a balayage here. She's going to be all one color. I'm going to take it from the scalp out on all of it. I'm going to go to the scalp on that... Um, um, uh, on the virgin lightener. I'm going to go to the ends on the retouch and just make her all one color. So, uh, and this is pretty much the same color. The color that I'm using is pretty much the same color that she is. So we're just going to take that and put it on all over and I'll show you the results uh, during class tomorrow uh, so that you can see it. And I may show you the results tomorrow also on this video. We'll just add it on when I when it's finished uh, tomorrow morning. So and then we'll just add it on and this is going to be part two. But thank you so much students. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you had fun today doing color on your mannequins because doing it from home like we've been doing. Goodness, you guys are, and I can't stress it enough, making history. Take care. See you tomorrow. Whenever you're ready. Go. Oh, all right. Uh, okay, students, I wanted to, this is phase two of that first one.
And basically what I did with this, I just used my thermal iron and put some curls in it real quick for you. And uh, this one, it says I want to lay forward because it totally dried forward when I dried it. I just shampooed the color out on it. This is the one that I did in class with you. All right. So what I want to show you, I used a level four color on it, which is darker than um, the color that your mannequin is right now. And let me see if I can find one that's close to you guys. No, that's not it. I want to say, is this one? Nope, that's not it either. I have different mannequins all over the place. This is a Miss Kim, but see, this one is already darker. This one was lighter, was one of the lighter mannequins that you had. And um, I wanted to make sure it matched mannequin with mannequin name. And I, no, actually, this is one of mine. So um, in taking it, we had it, you see, it's just a bit darker. This is a little bit more goldy. This has definitely got some stronger red tones to it. So this was a level 4N. N is red and blue. So it tells you, and it uh, for some reason, like I said, you've got to learn your product. On the rust colors, it said N401. So maybe one means it's a lighter shade of the level 4 color, going more into the level 5, because this is a level 5. So you can see the depth of color in it. And it's got, uh, you know, definitely a darker brown. This is more of a golden brown. So these two are the same mannequins that um, I went ahead and got on my own. But what I want to show you is, I'm hoping I can do this, is just the styling. And see how I'm using my hand to control it? That's what you do. You put your hands in there. And the warmth of your hands actually gives the hair movement as well. And just bring it back. Now see how that's trying to fight me and still go forward? Okay, so this is where I would then take my... Um, and by the way, I want to let you know that um, on the video that we did yesterday, the one that we finished up, um, we uh, also did one more color service on it. So that we did the balayage on it. So I want you to know how to, the, the procedure for the balayage again, and again it's got a thing called melting. So like that's, that's where you see the lines. Okay, so I'm just gonna tease this up. And again, I've shown you how to do this. I'm waiting for it to cushion up in there. This is all, you know, pretty much one length. So it's when it's one length, it's gonna be a little harder. All right, so now I'm gonna get it to go back. I'm going to tell that hair what it's gonna do. This hair right here, same thing, it wants to split down the middle. So I'm just going to back comb it. Now, um, what we did on the mannequin that we used for the video, we used the Miss Kim mannequin. Okay, so this, I want it to go off to the side, and I am going to back comb it up on top just to direct it a bit. And then this, again, I want to give it some direction, so I'm going to get a good cushion in there, and see the mannequin is moving, so we know that we're putting a really good cushion in there. And you have to feel that cushion as you do it before you go up a little higher. And then we're going to bring that back. Now, this is where your styling aids come in. This is where you decide, okay, what I'm looking for is my pick, but I can't find it. It's here somewhere because I just used it a minute ago. Um, this is where, okay, now you see that split right there. Okay, so I want to clean that up again. We're going to take a little bit from the back, a little bit from the front, that's what the cushioning is about. It joins that hair together. Now you've done it. You've done the back combing. So see how this maintains control for you. All right, so I want this to go back. So I need to force it by putting that in there, 
to get it to do what I want it to do. And just basically, let me take a look at it and see what we've got because I can't see it to see that I'm doing this correctly. All right, I want this up a little higher and to go back. I want this to go in this direction. See, you can change the direction just by adding a little bit of back combing. I do want just a slight bang right there. And then we want this hair to be full. Now, how do I secure that it's gonna stay in there? How do I secure that all this is gonna work for me? See, I have no styling aids in it. So this is where then I take it, hold it, spray it. Hold it, spray it. And see, it's doing what I'm asking it to do. Hold it a minute, give it that nice little lift, and spray it. So that the hair goes back, come on hair, go back, the way I want it to. So when I, when I dry, when I shampooed this, I just let all the hair fall forward. So it's fighting me right there. But now the back, we've just put a little bit of movement into it. It's not a real dressy style, but for this length hair, you know, you're gonna get that. Then you see this little bubble right here. Okay, we just bring it back and spray it. So just attach it to that, spray it back and make the movement go in whatever direction you want. And after you spray it, let's say that you see something that you want to curl. Okay, once you've got some product on there, it's going to do a lot more for you because you have substance in there. You have something that's gonna hold that hair in place. So this is, this is the cut for the next haircut that we're gonna do, the next two haircuts that we're going to do. So you can see how many layers you're gonna have, no matter how short or how long it is, you're going to have layers all over. Now, one thing that I want to show you, remember this one I did darker. And this is the one that I used for you guys in class. So even though my color looked white, it was darker. All right. So the one that we did the video with, let me make sure that's going to stay up there, was this one. This went lighter. Now look at your mannequin. Look at your, the color of the mannequin that you have. Now this has been highlighted, so the highlights are even brighter. Now that this area, the brown area that used to be brown, has now warmed up. Now it's not very clean in the back, but I'm not taking that off because we are gonna clipper cut this. But normally as a, as a stylist, once you style it for the client, you would clean that up just a bit. You might get your texture sheer, you might get your shear and just point cut it so it cleans it up. And whoa, there's that corner right there for that, uh, for the nape line. And it's exactly right there. I can feel it. So things like that, you know, that's what you clean up. Your client is, you know, she may get some of that volume, but she's not standing behind herself. But look at the gold in this. And now you can really see those highlight lines since we lightened it the rest of it to go with it. For whatever reason, when this area was darker before, and you'll see it when we do, when, when I was applying. If you go back to the video where I'm applying the color on this, that this one's on the video, the other one was in class. But when you see that I was applying, you can see that it was darker. Now that we've taken a lighter color, and I just used what's called a high lift tint with too many volume. So high lift tints tend to have a little bit more ammonia in them. And because of that, they're going to lift a little more. Now this was blow dried to have lift. And you remember how I do that on the video. I hold it, blow dry underneath, let it cool, and it just lifts that up for you. So the same back here. I separated, we subsectioned the hair and just basically took off the parietal line and did that last. So that falls into what we call what? The natural fall. So you're going to find these areas in that, and um, the review, of course, we did the a tint going darker. I mean, yeah, did a tint going darker. That was from scalp to ends. And now remember, I used a blonde on this, an ultra light blonde. The procedure was the same. Just took it out from scalp to ends. 
all right? A tint retouch only at the scalp. We did a virgin lightener, mid shaft, the middle of the hair shaft. You see it? We didn't do it here. We didn't do it at the scalp. We didn't do it on the ends. In the middle, that's called the mid shaft, all right? So that's the procedure for that going lighter. What were the similarities? The similarities is for a chemical hair relaxer, this procedure is identical. There's little things that we're gonna do with the relaxer to make sure that the hair is getting straight. But uh, you, you know, when we study hair structure, which that's coming up pretty soon, some of that'll make sense to you. But for me to now take lightener or use a bleach on this would totally destroy this hair. This hair is now at a level seven. The level seven is gold. So lighter than gold is yellow gold. What is the personality character of yellow? Yellow says grabs and lets go. Well, we're gonna weaken it if I do that. I don't wanna weaken it anymore. Because it is gold, yellow and red only, I have the quality of red. But if I do yellow, take it up with a lightener and take it to yellow or yellow gold, I've taken all the strength out of it. At this point, we still have some strength, we can still I mean, it, it wasn't that difficult to blow dry, but if, you know, your mannequins get real tangly and stuff after we do a lot of color on them and a lot of chemical, that's why. Remember, as I stated before, any single chemical service to the hair shaft is like taking a feather. And remember, we ruffled back this feather, what, 12 times? Three times. So four services on these ends are going to create this. The hair, the cuticle is going to be broken. You can't fix it. You can't go back in and style it and try to fix it. You're going to have those little frayed ends. Now, if I try and bring this feather out the way it was when I found it, um, it there's no way. It's broken into. You have to break into the cuticle to do that. So we wanted to add this to the other video. You saw I used a darker color on that one. The, the regular one is a little bit gold brown. That one is more of a red brown. And this, of course, went up to gold. It was a level five, now it's a level seven. So, and most color will lift with the 20 volume up to two levels, five, six, seven. All right, remember the higher the number, that means that's how much color has left. So that's part of the process of hair coloring is knowing those things. So we're going to, like I said, I am going to be doing a video on just the theory of color, just how we evaluate, how we break it down. And I will tell you now, it's going to have nothing to do, we'll mention it, with canceling or neutralizing. It's all about combining color to create color. People that are licensed are more likely to understand this, are more likely to go, okay, from what I know about color, now this makes sense. So uh, for those of you that are learning, are just now learning, it's gonna take practice on your part. Once you've used it, but the point is, you will know, all right? Okay, so we're about, it's almost time for me to start my class with my students. I just wanted to finish that one video to show you the finished look on both of them. As far as what we did, everything was all taken out to the ends at the, at the finish after we did all the procedures. We pulled all that color, all that lighter color, darker color in uh, to the ends just to finish it off and make it uniform and even. So more for visual, uh, otherwise we'd be a little scattered on the color. Thank you very much. See you later.